Watch, Watch out, out, it's dangerous around here. Now each of the 16 personality types has strengths that set them apart from the other types. But what happens when those strengths aren't used in the most responsible way. Today we're going to be looking at what makes each of the 16 personality types dangerous. dangerous. What inclinations each personality type has that can spiral out of control and make them a threat. Because that's right, everyone is out to get you. That's the Frank James <laughs> philosophy over here. First up is the ESTP, the epitome of living for the moment. Being a hands-on practical thinking type who leads with extroverted sensing, ESTPs are never afraid to jump into the action. Sometimes trouble finds them, but more often than not, the ESTP is an instigator. A wild child, if you will, who doesn't want to be held down by arbitrary rules. Or even rules that are not arbitrary. Rules that are perhaps well thought out. You know, their intellect is nothing to smirk at either. If you try to put a problem or obstacle in their way, they're going to take the introverted thinking time to equip themselves with the knowledge they need to overcome it. That's what extroverted sensing plus introverted thinking is all about. Let me gather new knowledge of like the real world world and use it to solve whatever problem is in front of me. What makes them truly dangerous is their fearlessness. So never tell an ESTP, you won't do that. Never tell an ESTP, come on, punch me, because uh, <laughs> they're going to do it. Sounds pretty dangerous, huh? Next up is the ESFP. And much like the ESTP, this type lives in the moment better than all the rest of the types. But instead of following their thinking side, they live life based on what they value. This can be dangerous, dangerous. because the ESFP could decide to stand up and rush into a fight over something that doesn't even make sense. As long as it's something they know deep down in their hearts is worth fighting for. Plus, ESFPs are independent, so it's very hard to talk them out of something that they've already decided to do. When you think of how an ESFP can be dangerous, think of the young brash hero in a movie, eager to rush into adventure or stand up against the villain. Even if it might make sense to like, maybe not do that. Like maybe don't do that thing that makes the whole movie worth watching. ESFPs might be the underdog sometimes, but they can always channel that energy into pure willpower and action to get what they want, which sounds pretty dangerous to me. With the ISTJ, we have a type who will kill you with the details. So imagine walking into a courtroom as a defendant. Some people watching are like, oh man, I don't need to, I don't need to imagine that. Hello to all my uh, viewers in jail right now. Imagine you robbed a candy store or something. You just had to have the sweet, candy but you couldn't pay for it. You might think you have a good alibi, but the ISTJ prosecutor already knows everything about you and has spent countless hours studying the evidence. He knows about all your fingerprints all over the life-size M&M guy at the candy store. Nothing you can say can get through their iron defense because they know all the facts of the case inside and out. That's what these types are great at. You give them a small number of facts, they'll go over them over and over and over again and they'll be like, okay, I know that from every angle I can create a case out of this, no problem. Now an ISTJ might be more likely to follow the rules, which you would think would make them less dangerous, right? But here's the thing, they know the rules way better than you do. And they know how to use the rules to get what they want. And what they want is to put your butt in jail for stealing candy. <laughs> I don't know where I came up with that. Now when you think of an ISFJ, the word dangerous probably isn't the first word that comes to mind. Every type has their trigger though, the thing that they will throw hands for. The thing that makes them dangerous. dangerous. So for ISFJs, what makes them dangerous is their fiercely protective mindset. The ISFJ will go into beast, beast mode, mode to preserve and protect what is important to them. I mean, on the 16 personalities website, aren't they called like the defender or something? This is why. Now, if you don't threaten their way of life or the happiness of their sphere, like the people around them, you'll likely think that the ISFJ is one of the most pleasant types. But as soon as you cross the line, the protector comes out and will spare no one. Wow, sounds pretty dangerous. The ESFJ, on the other hand, is more proactive in their actions. ESFJs, they're like royalty of the social landscape. They know what's going on, they know who has social status, and they know what they need to be doing to get the status that they want. I mean, most of the time the ESFJs aren't necessarily trying to climb that ladder, but they, they know all about it. What makes the ESFJ dangerous is that they can use their social influence to lift you up to the top 
of that social ladder or push you down to the bottom. It's all about connections, baby, and the ESFJs are likely to have more connections than anyone else. While the ESFJ is direct in their social tactics, the ENFJ can be a little more subtle in their approach. ENFJs are just as in tune with the social landscape as their cousins, the ESFJs, but their key strength lies in their charisma and influence. An ENFJ can convince a group of people that a certain goal might be in their best interest, which, if used responsibly, can be great for everyone. Everyone. Like, hey everyone, we should all contribute to this project to for the betterment of our community. But you know what? That power can also be used irresponsibly. So you can see how in that scenario, it can get pretty dangerous pretty fast. It could be like, hey, let's all contribute to this project to ruin <laughs> this person's life. Wow. Dangerous stuff. Now the ESTJ's approach to being dangerous is pretty straightforward. They will just put in the work and the effort. ESTJ's are masters of productivity and organization and that is how they get what they want from the world. Other types might stop for breaks or complain that a system is broken or they'll be like, oh, I, I need lunch. <laughs> I need a sandwich, please. Oh. But the ESTJ says no. no. They're like, no matter what system or challenge I can climb to the top through sheer force of effort. In fact, they may pick up the pieces of a broken system that one of the other whiners are complaining about. The INFJs are like, oh no, this <laughs> being unnecessarily mean. The ESTJs will be like, yeah, it's broken. Let me see how I can fix it. And then I'm going to use it to my advantage because I'm going to know the system better than everyone else because I put it back together. Uh, to me, that sounds kind of dangerous. Being life's natural commanders, ENTJs have a forceful personality and the natural ability to organize. Unlike the ESTJ, they tend to be more oriented towards focusing on a plan or creating a system. So what this means is that they will organize people and resources, or sometimes people as resources, and direct them all in the direction of the outcome they want. That is right, they will direct them in the direction. Whether it be conquering a country like Napoleon or conquering the office, like a hypothetical ENTJ in an office. The ENTJ will have a clear vision of what they want and the resourcefulness and drive to get it. This makes them dangerous because they will utilize whatever tool they need to achieve whatever it is they're setting out for. They don't stop at nothing. That seems pretty dangerous. Now, ISTPs aren't as impulsive as their extroverted counterparts, but they aren't afraid to jump into the deep end of any problem they come across. The ISTP's real strength is in their ability to use their introverted thinking to dissect any problems they come across and then use their extroverted sensing to find a quick and practical solution. It is their desire not only to understand, but also to act in the face of challenges that makes them dangerous. ISTPs are probably probably the type most able to solve practical problems on the fly. This is opposed to like social problems. They're not, <laughs> they're not gonna solve social problems on the fly. But think about the fictional ISTP character of James Bond. Any situation he is thrown into, he is able to get his way out of it and send his enemies into a world of pain. Because if he didn't, the movie would be over and we can't do that because it's a very successful series, very lucrative, or the studio makes too much money. James Bond, he cannot die. So one moment an ISTP could be crafting a new mechanical invention and the next moment they could be using it on you. Dangerously. Dangerously. Dude, that mechanical invention seems very dangerous. I am getting nervous. <laughs> now INTPs love to push the limits of ideas. Now an age old question among scientists is just because you can, should you? In other words, just because something is possible for us to do, like say, I don't know, uh, create an atomic bomb, should we do that? Uh, I'm not sure this is the best idea. But for the INTPs, the answer is yes. <laughs> Why not? Not because they're trying to be destructive necessarily, but it's just because they want to know. They want to be like, can we do it? If we can, we should try. I mean, after all, until an experiment has been completed, we can't really know what the outcome will be, right? This makes INTPs dangerous when they take it to that extreme. For a less existentially dreadful example, imagine Dr. 
Frankenstein and his monstrous creation. Should we sew together a bunch of body parts and, and reanimate it? Probably not, but I am doing it. Let's go. The Halloween costume licensing is just too much money to pass up. Frank, I don't understand these jokes today. The dangerous INTP is willing to push the limits of what should normally be done if it will allow them to get to the answer of whatever problem they are trying to solve. If you actually read the book Frankenstein though, it's, it's a, lot, a lot less about like a scary monster and more about how the monster feels like isolated from humanity. Is Frankenstein's monster an INTP? I don't know, but either way, it sounds dangerous. Now ISFPs have a unique type of danger, okay? ISFPs are dangerous because of their idol-like influence. So their goal is to be 100% uniquely themselves at all times. And if the cards fall right, this means that people can fall head over heels for them. Now, obviously you can fall head over heels for anyone, right? But the ISFP is especially dangerous because ISFPs, they're not trying to trick anyone. We're not talking about like an INFJ. They're like, I'm just acting out what I think people want to see, blah, blah, blah. No, ISFPs, they're actually being 100% authentic to themselves and they're acting in a representative way of what they truly believe in. SF types, they're dealing with a communication that is very like gut level. S, reality, the facts, F, feeling. So I, ISFPs, they're acting authentically, they're being truly themselves, they're communicating it in a way that anyone can understand. They're feeling it on a gut level. It's getting dangerous. The reason their personalities tend to be so strong is because not only do they have a strong FI identity, but they also act out their identity and values through extroverted sensing, which is obvious and easy for anyone to understand. This can make ISFPs feel very down to earth. You just get who they are. And there are few things more dangerous than a person who was so magnetically authentic that people will do anything for them. Perhaps even rob a candy store. Now because of their intuition, the INFPs are motivated by their ideals. And when they believe something is right, even if it's abstract and not easy to explain, they will do everything they can to live up to those ideals. They channel their emotions into their actions. And as we know, emotions don't need to follow the rules of logic. As such, their pure unfiltered feelings can allow them to accomplish things other people didn't think they could. Oftentimes you'll see INFPs who are kind of like maybe shunned a little bit or like sent off, you know, like uh, he's all off on his own and then they blow up in popularity or they accomplish something major and everyone's like, whoa, where did that come from? But it's not all fun and games over here, people. We're talking about danger, okay? So a dangerous INFP who exemplifies this is Kylo Ren from the recent Star Wars movies. He is fueled by emotion and a desire to live by what he feels is right, even if it's not necessary necessarily good or right for everyone else. What makes INFPs dangerous is their ability to completely dedicate themselves to whatever cause they feel is important, even if it's clearly going to cause issues for everyone around them. ENTPs are life's natural mad scientists. And much like the INTPs, they're gonna share a love for pushing the boundaries of anything that they're trying to understand. What makes the ENTPs unique is that for them, the experimentation in and of itself is the fun part, the action and the reaction. It's not necessarily like, let's try to figure out this puzzle, though that is part of it. The ENTPs, they love the journey to get there. They love all the twists and turns and all the weird stuff we tried along the way. Yeah, so it's like if they get a better logical understanding of a situation as a byproduct, great, but the main fun for them is pushing the limits. So you can present them with a challenge and 10 possibilities pop into their head about how they can work around, over, or through it. They might not necessarily have a plan, but the dangerous thing is that boy oh boy do they have a lot of random ideas they want to try out and at least one of them will probably work and you certainly don't want to be the person on the other side of them. Wow. Pretty dangerous, huh? ENFPs are the definition of chaos, the type that cannot be contained. Just as creative and idea focused as the ENTP, they have a list of possible reactions to every problem. Being a feeling type though, their ideas don't necessarily need to be grounded in logic and can have a unique personal bent to them. Basically, as long as they think an idea is at the very least amusing, they are willing to try it. You'll be like, why did you do that really random bizarre thing? And they'll be like, I don't know, seemed funny. Do you see the danger inherent in this? A good example of this is the fictional character of Harley Quinn, you know, is running around with a baseball bat, a giant hammer, jack in the boxes and laughing gas practical? Is that really the best way to execute your plans of mayhem? Not really, but 
you definitely weren't expecting it, were you? And that is what makes the ENFP dangerous. dangerous. INTJs are life's natural masterminds. Their introverted intuition makes them tend to think about how things will unfold over a long period of time. This allows them to have a detailed plan for any situation. What makes the INTJ dangerous is that they can be like a spider, spinning a web, always ready to catch prey, which is you in this scenario. You may think you have them cornered, only for them to smirk, because you just fell right into their trap, you dummy. <laughs> Imagine like a grandmaster chess player, not just thinking one or two moves ahead, they're thinking 10, 15, maybe 20 moves ahead. Their introverted intuition, extroverted thinking combination, that combo meal, if you will, allows them to emulate the logic of their opponent very easily. They aren't just thinking for themselves, they're thinking for you too. Wow. Sounds pretty dangerous, huh? INFJs have the same ability to forecast events as the INTJ, except for them, it tends to be directed at people and their emotions. INFJs naturally are tuned into other people's desires and motives, and this often makes INFJs adept at knowing what words they need to say and how they need to say them in order to elicit certain emotions or psychological reactions in another person. This makes INFJs dangerous because they can be the most subtly influential type. They're not just gonna walk into a room and you're like, oh, I can tell you're trying to manipulate me. You will never know. For the quintessential INFJ example of this and how it can be dangerous, take a look at the illusionist Darren Brown, whose entire career is built on influencing people to do what he wants. You might not even know you're doing what an INFJ wants you to do, and in some cases, that's best for everyone. After all, in the mind of a dangerous INFJ, if you're happy and they get what they want, what's the harm? Well, pretty dangerous stuff, huh? Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay cool and attractive. They say a stranger's come to